I'm in, I'm in my house where we do homeschooling with my two children. And this map that we have is, has really been bothering me for a while. Do you see anything that's missing on the map? First of all, it's a little bit strange because it's, a, it's shaped like a rectangle, as if the Earth is flat. But it's missing an entire continent down here at the South Pole. It doesn't show the continent we call Antarctica. It's just missing. And I wonder why. Why would they leave a continent off of the map? I do also have this globe. And the globe does show Antarctica. You can't see it from above, though, because it's on the South Pole. But if you flip the globe upside down, there it is on the bottom. The Antarctica on the bottom of the Earth or on the South Pole. Unloading. Reconnaissance planes first. Next, hauling equipment. The Marine Corps weasels, heavy-duty caterpillars, and trucks, 40 in all. Here are no port facilities, but the Navy shows its self-sufficiency as it did throughout the war in operating at sea without bases or with improvised bases. Here are no docks or roads, yet all freight aboard three heavily laden ships is hauled two miles over the ice up to Little America. The call goes out for dynamite crews, Navy's trained demolition teams, seasoned on enemy beaches. CBs and their bulldozers follow, smooth out the road for the big cats. In two hours, they bridge crevasses 100 feet deep. And so 10,000 tons of gear brought down by the cargo ships start moving up to Little America. Work goes steadily forward. CBs, with all hands helping, use every one of the 24 hours of daylight in the South Pole summer. Caterpillars with snowshoe oversized treads accomplish in hours the work that in old days hundreds of dogs could do only in weeks. Air strips, smoothed out with drags, Take high priority. Food dumps grow steadily. Here is the favorite hangout of the veteran husky, Ricky. Born at Little America 12 years before. Knocked down Wanigans grow magically. And the air headquarters Quonset is ready. And now, the ordered streets of a tent city that is Little America the Port. Let's pretend we don't exist. Let's pretend we're in Antarctica. Let's pretend we don't exist. Let's pretend we're in Antarctica. Admiral Byrd says goodbye and good luck to an over-ice expedition which is to probe deep into the Rockefeller Mountains, 300 miles southeast. Do we have the full screen of the, um, of the buildings? It's 30 Rockefeller Plaza. This is 30 Rock, NBC building, okay? And this is a multi-block uh, Radio City Music Hall is over here. Simon & Schuster building is over here. Across the street is uh, part of Rockefeller Plaza. Two LVTs hauling supply sledges strike out into the white darkness. Their mileage checked by bicycle wheel counters astern. 
In the mountain rocks, they will seek minerals and ancient petrified vegetation. Each plane is serviced on exact schedule with 1,200 gallons of high test gas and with preheated oil tested to function at 80 below. A pressure tank, especially designed for operations in deep cold, pumps the oil into the planes. Daily flights begin. Each plane has a definite sector to explore, a definite timetable, a definite radio report schedule. While the weather holds, flights operate around the clock. Aboard the destroyer Monson, he sails close in to Mount Erebus. 14,000 feet above the sea, an active volcano near the South Pole. Recording, evaluating, mapping. Plateaus, mountain ranges with peaks 20,000 feet above sea level. The trimetric on lenses, clicking overlapping exposures every three seconds, photograph from horizon to horizon. Coal, a mountain of coal. Bird later declares Antarctic mines, if once tapped, could supply the world's coal needs for centuries. Our Western group, flying hundreds of air hours, mapped the 4,000-mile sunset coast, made the amazing discovery of warm land in Antarctica. The universal white is turned to chocolate brown, dotted with blue. A cameraman goes into action. 300 square miles of land without snow. Land that might be in New Mexico or Arizona. Pictures alone will prove Bunger has discovered a warm oasis in the shadow of the pole. The astounding, undreamed of fact is that they are over a chain of warm water lakes whose shores, except for small patches, are free of ice and snow. Commander Bunger circles the largest lake in sight, five miles long. He comes in to make a landing. Water temperatures must be recorded. Samples taken. He finds the water fresh, the temperature 38 degrees Fahrenheit. On the shores are vast deposits of coal and of minerals of the utmost importance to civilization. This is incredible. They found, decades ago, a warm place on Antarctica. Unless we learn otherwise, it will be prudent to suppose that the next ice age could begin to bite at any time. In the 1970s, there was a big scare about global cooling. Climate experts were worried that we might be headed towards a new global ice age. Time magazine reported in 1974 that, quote, the atmosphere has been growing gradually cooler for the past three decades. The trend shows no indication of reversing. John Coleman is the founder of the Weather Channel. He was also the first weatherman ever on Good Morning America, and he is currently weatherman at KUSI News in uh, San Diego. Well, I've been listening to all the global warming talk for a long time and posting material about global warming on our website. But finally, uh, the crescendo of global warming myth, nonsense, exploded in my head, and I had to write a real rant. And all I was doing was telling you the truth as best I know it. Glenn, you've got to make a living, first of all. So you spent 10 years becoming a Ph.D. in meteorology. you got a research job, and you decide you're going to research the effect of, of human activity on global climate. And if you were to put out a research report that said, not much and it doesn't seem too bad, uh, you probably wasted all your... And I found out it was bogus science. It yeah. wasn't real. The numbers had been massaged. The whole thing had been created. What bothered me was that the other scientists had accepted it. Well, why did they possibly do that? And I think the real answer to that question is that uh, they all have an agenda, an environmental and political agenda that said, let's pile on here. We're all going to make a lot of money. We're going to get research grants. We're going to get awards. We're going to become famous. But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare, and into many foolish and hurtful lusts, 
which drown men in destruction and perdition. For the love of money is the root of all evil, which, while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith, and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. In fact, it's a quite new discovery for us that the earth can turn so cold so fast. The problem is, could that happen again to us right now? CO2 does not control the weather. God controls the weather. It was called Operation Deep Freeze, and tonight a Five on Your Side investigation reveals it may have exposed thousands to radiation. What did an estimated 15,000 share in common that's now suspected of slowly poisoning them with radiation? And our investigation found others across the country, all Navy veterans who either died or are fighting cancer, and all shared one thing. They all served at McMurdo Station, a U.S. Navy base in Antarctica, and it was powered by this, a portable nuclear plant. At one time, I heard the siren. Something happened up there, but, you know, they, we weren't made aware of it. In fact, we found 438 malfunctions from 1964 through 1972. The Navy's final operating report also found leaking water surrounding the reactor and hairline cracks in the reactor liner as early as 1964. I was amazed at how many times they had malfunctions. You know, we didn't have an accident, we had a malfunction. The same report found contaminated soil was loaded into dump trucks, hauled away uncovered, and loaded onto cargo ships for disposal in the United States. One thing I learned in my investigation was that there are many military bases on Antarctica representing many different nations. I was surprised by how much activity is on Antarctica. For then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor ever shall be. And except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. Then, if any man shall say unto you, Lo, here is Christ, or there, believe it not. For there shall arise false Christs, and false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders insomuch that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Behold, I have told you before. Wherefore, if they shall say unto you, Behold, he is in the desert, go not forth. Behold, he is in the secret chamber, believe it not. For as the lightning cometh out of the east, and shineth even unto the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For wheresoever the carcass is, there will the eagles be gathered together. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. Ye are from beneath, thine from above. 
ye are of this world, I am not of this world. I said therefore unto you that ye shall die in your sins, for if ye believe not that I am he, ye shall die in your sins. The Antarctic Treaty was negotiated over 50 years ago. There are currently 50 nations which are parties to the treaty and the treaty um, governs uh, Antarctica and the Southern Ocean. This history has been banned from being taught in the government schools. Sometime after the Great Flood, civilization re-emerged on the face of the earth. A people that had no city of their own were in bondage in Egypt, serving the rulers, performing the burdens of the Egyptians. The Lord God had mercy on those people, freeing them from their masters. With the strength of the hand of the Lord, he brought those people out of bondage. Nations which are a party to the Antarctic Treaty system hold an annual meeting.
the Lord Jesus says, And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Turn away from your sins and turn toward the Lord God.